Hi, I'm Guy Powell, and welcome to the next episode of The Backstory on Marketing. If you haven't already done so, please visit ProRelevant.com and sign up for all of these episodes and podcasts. I'm the author of the newly released book, The Post-COVID Marketing Machine, Prepare Your Team to Win, and you can find more information about this at marketingmachine.prorelevant.com. There's so many things going on in marketing today, but CMOs need to stay one step ahead while they help their businesses succeed in the marketplace. Many times they are a challenger brand, and that's what we're going to be talking about today with John Gumas. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about John. John is the CMO of Gumas, an award-winning, full-service San Francisco advertising agency and the country's foremost authority on challenger brand marketing. John is also the author of two books, Marketing Smart and Challenger Brand Marketing, which describe how challenger brands can effectively develop marketing strategies to take on their largest competitors. Welcome, John. Hi, Guy. It's so nice to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And I do like those baseballs behind you there. And we've already talked a little <laughs> bit about that. So we're going to leave that off at the moment. Uh, so anyway, uh, aside from baseball, tell us how you got into uh, into marketing. What is your backstory on marketing? Well, you know, it, it's uh, I think like like many entrepreneurs or, or people that uh, are, you know, have been in an industry for a long time. It's a passion. Right. It, it's uh, um, it's it's not a it's not a. Uh, a career, it's a passion. And um, I've been lucky enough to to be able to live out my passion. And my passion has always been marketing. I actually have a degree in marketing uh, from San Francisco State University. And I've been fortunate enough to have uh, my company for almost 40 years. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm as excited today as I was 40 years ago, because like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's a passion. And this, th there's a lot of advertising agencies out there, but but this company started in. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a a a, a, a common uh, way, but you know, back when when I was uh, when I graduated from college, started working for some of the big ad ad agencies, and it seemed like, you know, I would sit there, that that everything about their approach was based on on dollars, was based on money, was based on how much money do you have to spend. And I remember sitting in meetings uh, in these conference rooms with, and, and prospective clients would come in who would have phenomenal ideas. I mean, absolutely incredible ideas. And maybe at the beginning, they didn't have the multi-million dollar budgets to spend. And I remember in the, in the ad agency executives would say, yeah, sorry, we can't help you. So this happened over and over again. And I started thinking, well, what, where do these people go? What are they doing? I mean, because they have such great ideas. So... You know, that, that's what launched the, the concept of challenger brand marketing. And um, so it's a methodology that, that uh, uh, we created uh, 40 years ago. Uh, we own the trademark, the challenger brand marketing. As you said, we wrote the book on challenger brand marketing. And it's really designed for, for organizations that are not the biggest in their field. Doesn't mean they're small. I mean, Pepsi is a challenger brand to Coke. Um, but it's all driven around a methodology that if you don't have the most money to spend, how do you strategically build a marketing plan that is going to help you properly position, grow your company, and effectively compete to where you can systematically uh, take your company to the next level, next level, next level. So um, we've been doing that for 40 years, and, uh, and it's been very, very successful for us and, and our clients. Yeah, very interesting. Um, as you were talking, um, I was thinking about, uh, there's a professor here, I think he's retired now, Jagdish Sheth, and he was a professor at Emory. And one of the things he was talking about in one of his latest books was uh, the rule of three. So the rule of three is you have the, uh, the leader in the category, then you have the first challenger, and then you kind of have the rest, so to speak. <clears throat> and the one that has the least amount of profit or the most difficulty is that first challenger brand, that the number two. And, uh, and quite often, to your point, it has to do with whether they have a strategy to really either stay as the number two and be a strong one or to try and take on number one and become number one. And, um, and unless they get it right, they can really, really be a, uh, a money loser uh, in, in, quite a, in quite a few ways. 
Um, so, uh, so what's your advice for uh, the, the number two brands, the challenger brands? Yeah. Well, that, that guy, that's such a good point. And, and the reason why, let's talk about the reason why first, that that typically happens is because companies think they can, if, if they think they can go head to head. And the problem with going head to head with someone who has more money than you, or more resources, I'm going to throw out resources as well, which could mean uh, uh, how many salespeople you have in the field? How much brand recognition do you have? How many retail locations you have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In addition to how much money do you have to spend? So if you're going to go head to head against anybody that has more resources than you, 